Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, Cathedral Church. They saw him turn water to wine. They saw him make the blind to see and the lame to walk. They saw him cast out demons. They even saw him bring the dead back to life. Again, of course, they heard his prophetic teaching and they were stu his prophetic preaching and they were students of his parabolic teaching. Yet, even after witnessing his miraculous powers, his extraordinary preaching and teaching, they never asked him to teach them to do these things. But then they saw him pray. After he was finished, Luke tells us, the disciples said to Jesus, teach us to pray. As far as I have been able to determine, the only thing that the disciples ever asked Jesus to teach them was how to pray. And so he did by teaching them what we have come to know as the Our Father or the Lord's Prayer. Now the question is, what is it about prayer that prompted the disciples to ask Jesus to teach them how to do it? In their request, the disciples are not asking simply to share in the prayer life of Jesus. Rather, they are asking to share in that which prayer offers as they witnessed it through Jesus, a deepening and abiding relationship with God. Throughout the Gospels, we see Jesus engaging in prayer, but not in some formulaic or ritualistic kind of way. Rather, when he prays, he is truly wrestling with God's relationship to him and his to God as he confronts the struggles, the doubts, and frustrations, perhaps even the fears of his earthly ministry and journey. We see this particularly in the Garden of Gethsemane as he prays, My Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. What Jesus shows us through his life of prayer is that prayer is not so much about asking God for this or for that, or even trying to bend or manipulate God to our will. Rather, prayer is about nurturing and deepening our relationship to God, even as we ask for help, seek understanding, and open ourselves to the very meaning and significance of that relationship as we journey through the ups and downs of our living. In this regard, prayer is not about asking God for gifts. Rather, it is about God's gift to us, which is nothing less than the gift of God's very self. Ask, and you will receive. Seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened, the parable tells us, for it is the case that through prayer we ask, we seek and we knock, your soul to discover the gift that is God to us. And so of course, God always says yes, just as Jesus said yes to the disciples by teaching them the Lord's Prayer. What is it about prayer? It is about a relationship with God. But what is it about the Lord's Prayer? Now admittedly, many, many words have been written about the Lord's Prayer. As simple as it may be, it is a prayer that has been studied by numerous theologians and scholars throughout the centuries for its rich in liturgical, theological, and spiritual meanings, which I could not and will not begin to capture from this pulpit on this morning. Rather, 
I want to highlight four things, the four Ps of prayer, if you will, that stand out for me as I reflect with you upon what it is about the Lord's Prayer, which perhaps prompted Jesus to teach it to the disciples, knowing that it would speak to them on their journey, even as it speaks to us on our journey in this our time, in this our place. So what is it about the Lord's Prayer? First and foremost, it tells us something about the very presence of God, a presence perhaps captured best in Matthew's version of Jesus' address to, the, to God, our Father who art in heaven. Throughout the Gospels, Jesus regularly addressed God as Father, which in and of itself was not unique to Jesus. In fact, this address reflected his Jewish religious heritage. Nevertheless, Jesus' particular emphasis and usage does reveal his special relationship to God as God's only begotten Son. But that Jesus teaches his disciples a prayer that addresses God as Father goes beyond its meaning for Jesus and points to God's particular relationship to the disciples, hence to us in our world. To say our Father who art in heaven, suggests to us a God who is not merely in God's heaven, but a God who is also always present with us as a father, that is, as a parent to his or her child. Put simply, Cathedral Church, the God who is in heaven, utterly above us, is also the God that is Father, intimately present with us. This God is present with us in our greatest agony and utter bliss, in our times of fear and confidence, and as the Lord's Prayer makes clear, even in the face of evil, helping us to resist temptation. The point of the matter is that the God of Jesus to whom we pray the Our Father is present with us fully getting it, if you will. That is, getting the very needs of our bodies, the cries of our soul, hearts, and the yearnings of our soul. For us to pray the Lord's Prayer is for us to get it. That is, for us to know the presence of the one who is always, always present with us. What more can we ask of God than that? a God who is always by our side. But then there is more. Give us this day our daily bread. What is it about the Lord's Prayer? It makes known to us a God who provides. There are events and times in our private and collective life that undoubtedly have the capacity to shake our faith in God to the very foundation. There are those dark nights of the soul, if you will, when we might find ourselves like Jesus crying out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken us? Yes, there are times in our lives and in this our world where it seems that God is not. And so there are times we feel as if we just can't go on or that life cannot go on like this. But it is through the Lord's Prayer that we are reminded that God does provide and will always provide the very sustenance, that is the very bread, whatever it is we need for life to continue and to flourish, no matter how dark, how dire, how bleak things seem even when all around us says death, give us this day our daily bread. There is simply no alley dark enough or ditch deep enough into which God cannot enter and provide the very conditions for life to go on, to flourish, and to continue. After all, this is the God who provided the manna from heaven to sustain the Israelites through their wilderness jersey, and the God who resurrected the life of Jesus from a crucifying death. With God, all things are possible. 
And so it is, we pray, give us this day our daily bread. So to affirm our relationship to a God who provides always what is needed for life to go on, regardless. And then we say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is it about the Lord's prayer? Through the Lord's prayer, we are grasped anew by the promise, the promise of God that the world the way it is, is not the way it is going to be. Indeed, the Lord's Prayer makes clear God's vision for us and for our world. For it is a vision where everyone will have what they need to live, give us this day our daily bread, and where forgiveness and grace will abound, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. In the words of Psalm 85, God's promised world is one where mercy and truth have met and where righteousness and peace shall kiss. Bottom line, the Lord's Prayer tells us God will have the final word. And so the way the world is, full of those who hunger for justice, mercy, and peace and don't get it, this world will come to an end. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is it about the Lord's Prayer? It is a prayer that reminds us of God's presence, God's provision, God's promise, even as it invites us to participation. Here's the thing about this prayer. From the time of Jesus and throughout our Judeo-Christian tradition, this prayer was a communal prayer. That is, it was meant to be said in community, as made quite clear in the first person plural pronouns used throughout, as in our Father, as in forgive us our sins. In teaching them the Lord's Prayer, Jesus was reminding the disciples of their communal existence together and hence their commitment to one another. It is in this way that the Lord's Prayer signals not only our commitment in relationship to God, but also our commitment in relationship to one another. Indeed, the two are inextricably linked. Put simply, as the Lord's Prayer is indeed an invitation to us to participate, to participate in the work of God's kingdom, it is also an invitation for us to participate together with one another as we participate in the kingdom building work. Essentially through the Lord's Prayer, as we pray in the first person plural, we are invited to live in the first person plural, as we, not I, as us, not me, as a community, not as individuals. That we pray the Our Father signals our commitment to participate with God. That we pray it in community signals our commitment to participate together. And so, here we are, back to the beginning. What is it about prayer? What is it about the Lord's Prayer? I don't have to tell you. All we have to do is to turn on the news or to simply look around to know that the way things are is simply not the way they are supposed to be. In so many ways, people are broken, just as in so many ways our world is broken, as far too often our very sacred humanity is betrayed, betrayed by our fears of and separation from one another, and hence by our alienation from God. But here's the good news. We don't need miraculous healing or resurrection powers. We don't even need astounding powers of preaching and teaching to get on to a different way of being, to mend our world, to move closer to who God would have us to be with one another and with God. No, we don't need these things. All we need is the ability to pray. 
for there is power in prayer. It is the power found in reaching out our finite hand toward the heavens and discovering the infinite gifts of God. It is the gift of God's presence that is always with us. It is the gift of God's provision that will always bring us through. It is the gift of God's promise that is that this won't be the way it is always. And it is the gift of God's invitation for us to participate with God and with each other in making what is wrong right again. And so it is, as we say the Lord's Prayer, as we nurture our relationship with God, we ask to appreciate the mercy of God's presence and provision we seek to understand the justice of God's promise as we knock on the door of God's heaven for the courage to participate with God and each other to make this world closer, just a little closer to God's vision. And so it is, let us join our voices with the disciples and say to Jesus, Jesus, Teach us, teach us to pray. May it be so. Amen.